The latest Star Wars movie is the seven in the movie serial series based on the original movie released in 1977. This movie has a look and feel more like the original movie, although like the rest of the movies, I found the plot thin and the action video game-like, but heck, it is what it is supposed to be, a Star Wars movie. I was entertained by the movie and the real 3D gave the movie a more in-person depth perspective to enjoy in a lot of the scenes, but you always get the feeling it was directed by J.J. Abrams, with his brusque style. He rebooted the Star Trek franchise in 2009 and Star Wars needed a reboot with those prequels, which I did not like, bad acting by some of the American actors, cartoon plot, etc. For example, there is one scene where one of the main antagonists demonstrates something like a Vulcan mind meld, which was not in the Star Wars universe. J.J. Abrams and his team have seemingly updated the Star Wars universe to a multicultural diverse universe of contemporary, liberal progressive America. Gone are the clone white guy army of stormtroopers of Star Wars, Episode 2, where now they are also black, female, etc. Did J.J. Abrams break canon of the Star Wars universe for stormtroopers, or did the Empire run out of clones? This movie is supposed to take place 30 years after the end of The Return of the Jedi, so I suppose anything could have happened. Without giving away any spoilers, Star Wars fans will find a lot of homages to the first movie, the retitled Star Wars A New Hope, in this sequel. The detail is better than the older movies using 1970s technology. The aliens are better, with better computer graphics and the ships and battle action is more fluid. The plot however is flimsy, and I think borrows somewhat from author Frank Herbert's Children of Dune, of the Dune series of books, which Mr. Herbert claimed Star Wars owed a lot to, and in this movie I have to agree 30 years after his death. This movie's plot is partially based on looking for Luke Skywalker, which is similar to the plot of Herbert's book. This movie has a simple plot created for those 10 plus and any adults looking for something more substantial should read the Dune books and one theatrical movie made. I would recommend viewing this movie at a budget movie theater or catching a matinee, as some theater chains are charging big admission prices for this movie, even at 4 a.m. showtimes. Well, given that most movies out now are terrible, theaters should try and milk this movie for all the customers they can get. My showing was just before 6 p.m. and theater was only half full, so this Star Wars mania may not have all the appeal the studio thinks it may have. The original Star Wars was still playing in some theaters one year after opening and selling out. There are more problems I have with this movie. Some of the actors are getting up there in years, so do not expect to see Princess Leia in a slave girl bikini. Overall, I think it is a little too much to ask the original cast to keep acting in the Star Wars franchise. Furthermore, what is with the character Kylo Ren wearing a mask when he does not have to? He looks like some over-eager cosplay guy put in the movie, who amusingly looks like a former doctor who with the mask off, winky face. If you thought this movie was that complex and involving, I would suggest that if it were not for the expensive special effects and marketing, independent filmmakers could make their own similar movies. Star Trek fans have made their own webisodes that are dangerously close to Hollywood production standards for those interested. Overall, this is an expensive B-movie worthy of watching, but the violence is a little intense for younger kids. Asterisk one special addition to look for is the Easter eggs in the movie, such as the one involving an interrogation room scene with Ray. Daniel Craig, doing a cameo as a stormtrooper, makes an amusing scene with protagonist tied up. Apparently, Craig had some extra time working on his Bond movie Spectre in an adjacent studio. One last thing I have to comment on. Why are the stormtroopers in the Star Wars universe wearing white colored armor? Given the technology of the storyline, why is there not different colored or camouflage armor? Is this supposed to be a subliminal social statement against the white majorities running some Western governments? Why is it the Empire in the franchise, and in this movie the First Order, resemble World War II Third Reich soldiers? Some of the actions by the stormtroopers resemble conduct by Waffen-SS soldiers on the Eastern Front, 
something hardly suitable for children. Check out Hitler's review of the trailer.